Lesson 4.8, Divide Using Partial Quotients. We can use partial quotients to divide by a one-digit divisor. We can choose multiples of the divisor to find partial quotients. We subtract the partial quotients from the dividend. So here we have 75 divided by 5 is equal to 15. The dividend is 75, the divisor is the 5, and the quotient, the answer, is 15. Remember that a multiple is a product of a number and a counting number. So the multiples of 5 are like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. We have 75, our dividend, and we think of a nice big multiple of 5 that we can subtract. So we think of 10 times 5 is 50. Our difference is 25. And we think of what times 5 is 25? Well, that's 5 times 5, so we subtract that and our difference is a 0. Our multiples were 50 and 25 to get our quotient 15. We can use rectangular models to show the multiples, partial quotients, and to better understand what is happening. We have 102 divided by 6. We need to find how many times 6 can fit into 102. And we think, well, 6 times 10 is 60, so we can subtract a 60, and the difference is 42. We have 42 left over. And we think, well, 7 times 6 is 42. We subtract that and get a 0, and our partial quotients are 10 and 7. So 102 divided by 6 is equal to 10 plus 7. It's 17. In the partial quotients method of dividing, multiples of the divisor are subtracted from the dividend, and then the partial quotients are added together. And their sum will be the quotient. A restaurant can seat four people at each table. If they can seat 136 people, how many tables does the restaurant have? So we begin by subtracting a greater multiple, such as 10 times the divisor, from 136, our dividend, and 10 times 4, our divisor, is 40. We subtract it, and our difference is 96. And we continue subtracting multiples of the divisor until the difference is less than the divisor, or it is 0. So we can take away another 40. Now the difference is 56. We take away another 40. Now the difference is 16. And we think, well, 4 times 4 is 16. So we take away a 16, and we have 0. We have a 10, a 10, a 10, and a 4 as our partial quotients. We add the partial quotients, and their sum will be the quotient. It's equal to 34 tables. So 136 divided by 4 is equal to 34. We look for the greatest multiple of the divisor that is less than the dividend, so it's got to be less than the 96, that we can multiply easily, like a 10. So we would do 10 times the divisor, 10 times 3. We have 96 divided by 3. We can take away a 30 as a 10 times 3. The difference is 66. We can take away another 30 as another 10 times 3. That difference is 36. We can still take away another 30. We do. And the difference is a 6. And now 2 times 3 is 6. We take away a 6 and we're at 0. We have a 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 2. The quotient is 32. And the greater the multiples, the fewer times we will need to subtract. So we subtracted 1, 2, 3, four times, which gave us one, two, three, four partial quotients. If we think, well, three times three is nine, so three times 30 is 90, we can take away a 90. That leaves a six, and two times three is six, and we take away that six and we're at zero. So our partial quotients are a 30 plus a two, it's 32, just like we got here, except we only had to subtract twice and we only had to add two add-ins to partial quotients because our multiples were greater. We'd used a 90 instead of a 30, 30, and 30. See? We can use rectangular models to record our partial quotients. 
we have 136 divided by 4. We need to find how many times 4 will fit into 136. We make a rectangle and write our dividend 136 inside. Here's our divisor 4. And we think, well, 10 times 4 is 40, so we could subtract that. That's going to leave a 96. We subtracted the 40 and it left a 96. And we can subtract another 40. So that's another 4 times 10. That's going to leave 56. See? We take away another 40 and that's going to leave 16. And we have a 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 4. We add the 4 partial products and get a 34. So we subtracted 4 multiples. 1, 2, 3, 4. It gave us 4 partial quotients which equaled 34. But the amount of times we subtract will be the amount of partial quotients we will need to add. So if we can use greater multiples, we won't have to subtract and add so much. If we use greater multiples, we will use less subtraction and less addition. Because the amount of times we subtract will be the amount of partial quotients we'll need to add. We had 136 divided by 4. We have our rectangular model with our 136 dividend inside. And we think, well, 4 times 3 is 12. So if we add a 0 to the 3 and make it a 30, it will be a 12 with a 0. It'll be 120. And we can take that away right away. That's going to leave 16. And 4 times 4 is 16. We take that away and we have a 0. Our partial quotients are a 30 and a 4. So we only had to subtract two times, and we only had two partial quotients because we used a much larger multiple of 4. We may prefer to subtract the divisor times 10 several times, then add more partial quotients to fully understand what we're doing. We may prefer to subtract greater multiples of 10 to go faster by doing less subtraction and addition. But either way, Make sure to subtract correctly. Make sure you're doing your math correctly. There's usually more than one way to solve a problem, but some ways are more efficient. For vertical division, we can write the quotient above the line over the dividend. We have 108 divided by 6. We need to find how many times 6 will fit into 108. We can start off by using 60. That's 10 times 6. That's a nice big multiple. We do our subtraction and the difference is 48. And we think, well, 8 times 6 is 48, so we could subtract that and get a 0. We add the 10 plus the 8 and get 18. And we write it above the line over the dividend using the correct place values. The 8 is in the 1's place for 18, and the 8 in 108 is in the 1's place. So we put them in the correct place value like that. See? That's in the tens place. The zeros in the tens place. We have them directly in line here. See that? Now here we have a much bigger problem. We have 740 divided by 5. That would take a lot of subtraction to keep subtracting small little multiples of 5. So I think, well, 100 times 5 is 500. We can subtract that. We do, and we get a difference of 240. And then I think, well, 5 times 4 is 20. So if I add a 0 to the 4 and make it a 40, then I can add a 0 to the 20 and make it a 200. We could subtract that. We have 40 left. And I know that 8 times 5 is 40. So we subtract 40 and we're down to 0. We add the 100 plus the 40 plus the 8. And our quotient is 148. And we write the 1 in the hundreds place above the 7. We write the 4 in the tens place above that tens place. We write the 8 in the ones place above that ones place. Now, we have got four division problems here. We've got 99 divided by 3, 100 divided by 3, 101 divided by 3, and 102 divided by 3. And we're going to see what happens when we start with 99 and increase the dividend by 1 so it's a 99 plus 1, so it goes up to 100. The 101 is the 99 plus 2 more. And the 102 is a 99 plus 3 more. We think, well, 30 times 3 is 90. 
So we could subtract 90. We're going to have 9 as the difference, and then think, well, 3 times 3 is 9, so we subtract that and get a 0. Our partial quotients are a 30 and a 3, so we have 33 for our quotient. When we increase this dividend, 99, by one more and make it a 100, now when we subtract 90, we're going to have 10 left over. That's going to give us a remainder 1. We still have the 30 plus the 3 for the 33, but now because the dividend was one more, it made us have one more when we subtracted the 90, and now we have a remainder of 1. And look what happens when we do 99 plus 2. So this is the same problem, it's just now the dividend is 2 more. Look, we're going to have a remainder of 2 because now when we do 101 minus 90, we get an 11. And 3 times 3 is 9, we have 2 left over, we have 33 remainder 2. Now what happens when we add 3 to it? So we had 99, we did 99 plus 1, 99 plus 2. Now what happens if we do 99 plus 3? We take away our 90 for our 30 times 3, and now we have 12 left over. Well, 4 times 3 is 12, we could subtract that and get a 0. And now our quotient is a 34. When we increase the dividend by 1 or 2, we're going to have a remainder because they're less than the divisor 3. When we increase the dividend by the amount of the divisor, see, we increased it by 3 and the divisor was 3, there's no remainder and our quotient increases. Now this one is asking what is the least number we can divide by 3 to get a three-digit quotient. So if we do 299 divided by 3, we get a two-digit quotient of 99. What do we have to do to make that a three-digit quotient? Well, if we do 300 divided by 3, we think, well, 100 times 3 is 300. There's our three digits. 300 is the least number we can divide by 3 to get a three-digit quotient. And 200 would be the least number we could divide by 2 to get a 3-digit quotient. And 400 divided by 4, or 500 divided by 5, or 600 divided by 6, those would be the least numbers that we could divide by that divisor to get a 3-digit quotient. Now we have a word problem that has a table involved. So let's see what the table says. It says Dave's Game Card Collection. It's the type of card and the number of cards he has. He has Magic the Gathering cards, and he has 288 of them, and he has Pokemon cards. He has 216 of those. And the question says, Dave wants to put nine cards on each page in an album. How many pages will he fill? So there's two different ways to solve this. We can, because he's putting nine cards on each page, we can do 288 divided by nine and find out how many, then do 216 divided by nine, find out how many pages, then add those pages together to get a total, or we could add 288 and the 16 together and do 504 divided by 9, and we'll get the same amount of pages. See? We had 288 divided by 9. We think, well, 9 times 3 is 27, so if I put a 0 on the 3 and make it a 30, I could put a 0 on the 27 and make it a 270. When I subtract, I'll get 18, and I know 2 times 9 is 18. I'll subtract and get a 0, and the 30 plus the 2 is 32 pages. For the 216, I think, well, 9 times 2 is 18. If I put a 0 on that 2 and make it a 20, I could put a 0 on the 18 and make it a 180. I'll subtract and get a 36, and I know 4 times 9 is 36, so I can subtract the 36 and get a 0, and my Partial quotients are 20 and 4, it's 24 pages. We added the 32 plus 24, and it equals 56 pages that he will fill in the album. If we added 500, added the 2 together to get 504, we think, well, 9 times 5 is 45, and if I put a 0 on that 5 and make it a 50, I'll be able to put a 0 on the 45 and make it a 450. I can subtract the 450, and their difference will be 54. 
and I know 6 times 9 is 54, so I can subtract that, and I get a 0, and my partial quotients are a 50 and a 6. I add them, and we get 56 pages, just like we did there. So there's usually more than one way to solve a problem. One way just might be more efficient than the other. Okay, let's use some higher order thinking skills. We saw that Dave has 288 Magic the Gathering cards and 216 Pokemon cards. He has four fewer boxes of Pokemon cards than Magic the Gathering cards. Well, he has less Pokemon cards, doesn't he? So it makes sense that he has fewer boxes of them. It says he has 16 boxes of Magic cards. How many boxes of Pokemon cards does he have? Well, if he has 16 boxes of Magic the Gathering cards and he's got four fewer boxes of Pokemon, we just do 16 minus 4. That's 12 boxes of Pokemon cards. Now, how many Pokemon cards are in each box? Well, we know he has 216 Pokemon cards, and if they're in 12 boxes, we can find 216 divided by 12. And you may think, oh, that's two digits, that's scary. But really, it's not, because we know about our zeros, don't we? We know 12 times 1 is 12, and if we change that 1 into a 10 by adding a 0 onto it, we can change the 12 into a 120 by adding a 0 onto it. 10 times 12 is 120. We can subtract and get a difference of 96. Then we can find a number times 12 that is around 96, but is not greater than 96. We do a little multiplication and see that 8 times 12 is 96. And we subtract it and we get a difference of 0. So we know we have 10 plus 8. There must be 18 cards in each box. Our next lesson, 4.9, is going to be about modeling division with regrouping. Stay focused, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.